Okay, so now we are looking at determinants in at calculating determinants by Gauss reduction. Okay. So, calculating determinants recursively is computationally expensive. Computer science majors, it's order n factorial. Never mind that. We might not notice how hard it is because we are only ever asked calculating determinants of small, i.e. 3 by 3 matrices. We should try to do better. Here are some facts that help. If all the entries, fact one, if all the entries in an entire row or column of a square matrix are zero, then the determinant of the matrix is zero. Of course, because if you ex expand along the row or column of zeros, you'll get zero times all the minus, all the cofactors, so you'll get zero. Okay, so there is a definition. A matrix A is called diagonal if Aij equals zero for I not equal J. The entries in the main diagonal may be non-zero or zero, but the entries off the main diagonal are zero. So a diagonal matrix is like this. In the diagonal, it's got entries that may or may not be zero. They can be non-zero, but off the diagonal, everything is zeros. Okay. Definition. A matrix A is called upper triangular or lower triangular. Oh, um, here's, this is a funny way in which we do often write things in math. So first of all, read it without the brackets. A matrix A is called upper triangular if Aij equals zero for J less than I. So when J is less than I, so when the when the column is less than the row, then the entry is zero. So when the column is less than the row, so when you are less far across than you are down, zero. So this is upper triangular because when you're less far across than you are down, so in this corner, in this corner you are further down, right, than you are across, so everything below the diagonal is zero. Okay, J less than I, that means below the diagonal. Below the diagonal because the diagonal is where you are as far across. The diagonal is where you are as far across as you are down. So when you are less far across and you are down, you're below the diagonal. Or another thing is you're further down, I is bigger, you're further down than you are across. So you're below the diagonal. Okay, it's upper triangular if it's zeros there. So it's upper triangle, upper triangular because it's so possibly the entries that are the entries that can be zero or not zero are in the upper part. Okay, so that's upper triangular. Now then, this definition has we read it again, but with the brackets this time. Matrix A is called lower triangular if A i j equals zero for i less than j. Okay, so now j is big greater than i, or i is less than j. So now we are less far down than we are across. We're further across than we are down. So then we are in this half up here, okay? So now a lower triangular matrix, then, so that's upper, this one is, that's the upper triangular one. Lower triangular, which is less important kind of matrix, by the way, you're gonna have possibly non-zero entries on the diagonal, okay? But when you are above the diagonal, when you are further across than you are down, you have all zeros. So it's zero there, zero, zero there, zero, 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 all zeros there, okay? And then below the diagonal, you the entries can be non-zero. They may or may not be zero. Oh, that, well, that's not one, two. That's, sorry. That is row two, column one, and then row three, column one, row three, column two, and so on, and then row, row n column 1. Oh, we're working with square matrices, of course, because we're calculating determinants. You only get determinants of square matrices. n2, a, n3, and so on. Okay. So that's, an, that's a lower triangular matrix. But the, really, the more important kind is the upper triangle. Okay. Another fact. No, zero. The determinant of a diagonal, upper triangular, or lower triangular matrix is equal to the product of the entries on its main diagonal. How do you do that? Why? Because if you repeatedly expand along the first column, sorry, what is the first column? Diagonal upper triangular. Oh, repeatedly expand along the first column if it's a diagonal matrix or an upper triangular matrix, or expand along the first row if it's a lower triangular matrix. So what they mean is, so let's let's uh, let's do this. Let's uh, let's see how this works. So if we're going to calculate the determinant of this diagonal matrix. You could expand along the first row, right? And you'd get 
that the determinant is a11 times the minor of what remains, plus now that all the other things in that column are zero, right? So you don't need to calculate the other minors are all times by zero. So you have a11 times this minor. But now if you want to calculate the term to what remains, you this is the recursive thing, you calculate a22 times the term to what remains. So zero, so so you're just doing this you're just doing the term of this, right? And so you calculate band along this column, so it's a22, then they use all these ones as zero, so you only need the a22 times by this minor. And you carry on doing that, a33 times the minor of what remains. Right, so you have a11, so it's like you have a11 times this minor, but then when you calculate that minor, it's a determinant, so you calculate a22 times that. And by the way, this is uh, all these entries are even entries because they're on the diagonal, so it's all you know, 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2. It's generally n plus n, um, i plus i, so it's 2i. So these are even entries, so we don't have to worry about minus signs. Now you have the minor of, of what remains, but now that's just expanded along the first column, that, expanded along this column. Now the first column of what remains, and you have a33, and you carry on doing that, and you end up with just times by a and n. So the determinant of this matrix is just multiply every entry on the diagonal. Okay. So the determinant of a diagonal is the product of the entries on its main product of its entries on the diagonal. Now we want to talk about see how that applies also to the determinant of an upper triangular matrix. So again, expand along the expand down the first column. So you start off with a11, and now we want the determinant of what remains. So this bit is out of it now. This whole first row is out because it's, you're taking out this first column and this first row. So we just want the determinant of this what this thing that remains. But now you have a22 and then all zeros. So the same thing, it's the same kind of thing as for the diagonal. It's a22, a11 times a22 times now the determinant of this thing that remains. Now these two rows are both out. So these two columns are out. We just want the determinant of this thing. So you go a33, and then it's all these are all zeros. So you have a33 times a44 and so on. So you get the product of the diagonals. Same, similar to a diagonal matrix. Same as the diagonal matrix. For upper triangular now, you should expand along, as I said, along the first row. So you start out expanding along this row, and it's all zeros, except for the a11. So you just have a11 times, now the determinant of taking out that row, that column, and this row. The determinant of what remains, unhighlighted. So now you expand along the first column, of the first row of what remains. So you have the a22. Everything else is zero, so it's just a22 times take away that row, take away that column, and what remains. So now it's a33. Expand along this col column, it's a33. Times the term of what remains, what remains is take out that row, that column, and so on. And so in this way, you just get a11 times a22 times a33 all the way to a and n. And again, all these entries are on the diagonal, so they're all even entries, so there's no minus signs involved. OK, so we have just proved that the determinant of a diagonal matrix or an upper triangular or lower triangular matrix is equal to the product of the entries on its main diagonal. Okay. Um, shall I leave it there now? Oh, no. Now, as it turns out, we can use this fact to easily calculate the determinant of an arbitrary square matrix. And we will do this by Gauss reducing the square matrix into a row echelon form. And then, of course, it's upper triangular, isn't it? If it's in row echelon form, the matrix is automatically upper triangular, keeping track of which Gauss reduction operations which Gauss reduction operations we performed. Each of the Gauss reduction operations changes the determinant in a simple way. So this is the, the plan, how you should always calculate the determinants from now on. We're going to see more of how to do it now. You reduce the matrix using Gauss reduction. That causes the determinant to change in certain predictable ways, and you reduce it until you get an upper triangular matrix, and then the result is just the, the product of the things on the diagonal, and then you just need to add in the factors that came about because of the Gauss reduction. And we'll see what we'll see what factors come about because of gas reduction in the next video. Okay.